Hi there. Let me take a few minutes to take you through example one on the probability review. Being able to read probabilities out of a table is something we've seen on the AP exam before. We've done this before, so let's review. So you need to total up your rows and columns in this two-way table. So there's a total of 21 Colts fans, total of nine subjects who aren't Colts fans. There's a total of 19 Pacer fans and 11 who aren't Pacer fans. So the 19 and 11 makes 30, so does the 21 and the nine. So the table total makes sense. So in question A, I'm interested in the probability that I select one Colts fan from among these 30 individuals. So there are a total of 21 Colts fans out of a total of 30 individuals that I could have selected. We're done. If you wanted to, I suppose you could reduce it. What would that reduce to? Seven tenths. You could write it as a decimal if you want to. Any of those would be a perfectly fine answer. So the difference in part B, this is a conditional probability. And specifically, you're isolating yourself to the pacer fan row. So looking at only this row, under the, under the condition that we already know someone is a pacer fan, what's the likelihood that they are a Colts fan? Well, there are 14 out of the 19 Pacer fans who are also Colts fans. That would be 14 out of 19. That's a perfectly fine answer, although for the next question, we'll want to change this to a decimal. That's about 0.74-ish. And in the next question, it says, use A and B to explain why the events Colts fan and Pacer fan are not independent. Well. If they were independent, it shouldn't matter whether you are a Pacer fan or not. Being a Pacer fan should have no effect on being a Colts fan if they are independent. But notice, knowing that someone is a Pacer fan actually increases the likelihood of being a Colts fan from 0.7 to 0.74. That condition, Pacer fan, should not affect the event Colts fan if these are independent. These are different probabilities. That's what tells me that these events are not independent. So essentially, I can see that the probability of a Colts fan is not the same as the probability of being a Colts fan under the condition that I already know that one is a Pacer fan. So these would have to be equal in order for us to have independence between these two events. And clearly, 0.7 is not the same as 0.74. That's one important way to look at independence. So D and E. Question D, this involves an intersection. This is an and question. So the likelihood that someone randomly selected is both a Colts and a Pacer fan. I am looking at the intersection of the Colts fan column and the Pacer fan row. There are 14 individuals out of a total of 30 I could choose, 14 out of 30. Again, you're welcome to reduce it to 7 out of 15. So the union symbol makes this an or question. So I am interested in selecting an individual who is a Colts fan or a Pacer fan. So I want to come back up to the table and I want to include all of the Colts fans or Pacer fans, but be careful. I don't want to double count the 14 Pacer fans that are also Colts fans. So in this question, I want to include the seven and the 14 and the five. Those are the subjects that I'm interested in accounting for. The seven and the 14 and the five out of the total of 30. So that's 26 out of 30. Looks like 13 out of 15. So in an and question, I am specifically looking for the overlap. That's the 14. In an or question, I want to be careful not to double count that overlap. That's something we'll see in example two in just a moment if you watch that video also. So lastly then, part F, find the probability that uh, the probability of selecting two Colts fans without replacement. So all of the other questions involved selecting one individual. Now we're going to select two individuals out of these 30. So let's select the first individual first. There are 21 possible Colts fans that I could have selected out of 30. But understand, if I don't replace that Colts fan, there are now, to find the second Colts fan, only 29 subjects from which I can choose, and only 20 of those subjects are Colts fans. So these two probabilities multiplied together, that would make the probability of selecting two Colts fans without replacement. 
So 21 times 20, that makes a total of 420. The denominator is 30 times 29, that's a total of 870. So that's a perfectly acceptable answer. You could reduce it if you wanted to, or you could turn it into a decimal if you wanted to. It's about 0.48. So there we go. The basics about probabilities that you can calculate just by reading numbers out of a table. That's a skill we've seen previously on the AP exam. Hope this is helpful.